Hola! Uh, today we're going to talk some more about nouns. In the last video we talked about uh, determining if a noun was masculine or feminine, which that's kind of an important thing to be able to do. But another thing that we'll have to be able to do is if we have a singular noun, we need to be able to make turn it into a plural noun. And so we're going to have a lesson today and uh, figure out how to do that. Uh, let me share a screen with us. And on the screen, we'll talk about singular and plural. I guess the real question is, is it one or is it more than one? One or more than one? Well, in the last video when we talked about gender, we said that every noun in Spanish was assigned as either being masculine or feminine. Quick review. We said that singular words that ended with the last letter being L-O-N-E-R-S was going to be masculine 97% of the time. And we said that singular words that ended with the last letter being D, I O N Z or A, was going to be feminine 98% of the time. Well, every noun is also singular and plural. And the purpose of today's video is to show how to make a singular noun in Spanish plural. We're going to learn four simple rules that will allow us to make a singular word plural 100% of the time. Here we go. Let's go over some rules. Rule number one. If a noun ends in a vowel, which is A, E, I, O, or U, all we do to make it plural is add S. Number, rule number two. If a word ends in a consonant, that's any other letter except for A, E, I, O, or U, then we will need to add E. S. And rule number three, there is, is one exception to the rule with the consonants, and that's if a word ends in a Z, we must first change the Z to a C, then we could add the ES. The reason we do that, for some reason in Spanish, they decided that a Z can never be in front of an E or an I, and so if we just added an ES, well, then we'd have a Z in front of an E, so that's why they have to change it to a C first. Rule number four, nouns that end in the letter S, well, sometimes we're going to add an ES, sometimes we'll just leave it with the S, and the only way we're really going to know is by experience with the language. And so as we go along, uh, I'll help us figure out whether that would be a word that, that ends in an S that we're going to add an ES to, or we're just going to leave it the same. Well, let's go to a list of nouns. So I'm going to change the screen again for just a second. And I will pull up a word list. It's the same word list that we had last time when we decided whether a noun was masculine or feminine. And we're going to use those exact same words and we're going to just make those words plural. Now there's kind of a reason why I do that is because every time we have a noun in Spanish, there's really going to be two important questions that we'll need to figure out. Is the word masculine or feminine? That's question number one. And then number two, is it singular or plural? And we'll get so good with that, but it just becomes automatic uh, for people that speak Spanish to know if a word is masculine or feminine or singular or plural. Well, here we go. We have a list of all of these words. Remember we had uh, four rules and really there's only there's two rules that, that count most of the time almost all of the words if it ends in a vowel a e i or u all we're going to do is add an s if it ends in a consonant we'll add an e s and every once in a while we'll talk about the letter z or s so we have actor actor ends in a consonant so all we have to do to make that plural is we would add e s actores Actriz. Oh, well, we got one with the Z. Remember, we said Z was a special one. And Z, we're going to have to do something different. So the first thing we do with the Z is we have to change that to a C. And then we would add ES. Okay, amigo. Oh, that ends in a vowel. All we do is add S. Autobus. Oh, that ends in the letter S. Uh, and we said sometimes we add ES and sometimes we don't. Well, in this case, we do add ES, and so we would have 
autobuses. Body ill ends in a consonant. What are we going to do? Yep, that's right. Yes. Cactus ends in an S. Uh, what are we going to do? Well, in this case, we're still going to add an ES. Cactuses. Cancion ends in a consonant. What are we going to do? Add ES. Canciones. Carbon and ends in an N. What are we going to do? Oh, we'll add ES. Carbones. Ciudad ends in a consonant. What are we going to do? Add ES. Ciudades. Clase ends in a vowel. What do we do? Yep, we just add an S. Clases. Uh, corazón ends in a consonant. What do we do? Yep, ES. Cosa ends in a vowel. We add S. Uh, just to go back and remember what the words mean. Actor was actor, so now we've got actors, actresses. Amigos are friends. Autobuses are buses. Barriles are barrels. Cactuses. Cactuses are cactuses. Uh, canciones are songs. Carbones are pieces of coal, several pieces. Ciudades are cities. Clases are classes. Corazones are hearts. And cosas are things. Well, let's do the second column. We should be getting a little bit quick, quicker with it. Dia ends in a vowel, S. Estante ends in a vowel, S. Examinus, a consonant, ES. Ferrocarriles, consonant, ES. Foto ends in a vowel, add an S. Graje, a vowel, add an S. Hijo ends in a vowel, add an S. Ogaras ends in a consonant, ES. Hotel, a consonant, ES. Luz, ah, oh, now we're back to the Z. What do we do with the Z? That one that's a little bit uh, strange, the exception to the rule. The Z, we're going to have to change to a C first, and then we would add ES. Mono ends in a vowel, we add S. Mesa, a vowel, we add S. Well, let's go back and look at the words. Dia becomes days. Estantes are bookshelves. Examinus are exams. Ferrocarriles are railroads. Fotos are photographs. Garajes are garages. Hijos are sons. Hogares are homes or houses, possibly. Hoteles are hotels. Luces are lights. Manos are hands. And mesas are tables. Let's do one more column. Should go very, very quick. We should be getting really good at it by now. Modelo ends in an O, we add S. Momento ends in an O, add S. Motores a consonant, we add ES. Naris, oh, another one with the Z, the exception to the rule. What do we do? Yeah, we should be getting faster. We're going to change the Z to what? Letter C, then we add the ES. Pared, consonant, add ES. Pena, ends in a vowel, add S. Perfume, ends in a vowel, add S. Relo, ends in a consonant, add ES. Television, ends in a consonant, add ES. Tiempo, ends in a vowel, add S. Vacaciones, consonant, add ES. And Voluntad, ends in a consonant, so we'd add ES. Well, let's go back to this last column, and we can see modelos are models, momentos are moments, motores are motors, narices are noses, paredes are walls, penis are pains, perfume, perfumes are perfumes, relojes are watches, televisiones are televisions, tiempos are times, uh, vacaciones are vacations, and voluntades would be wills. Okay, so we've gone through now. We've practiced gender before. Well, now gender is important, so we still have to keep remembering that. But now we also can learn how to make a word singular or plural. Oops, looks like I misspelled that, so let's go back and get C. 
singular or plural. Okay, <laughs> let's go back to, I'll share just a couple more slides and then we're done with the day's lessons. Okay, so back to our little PowerPoint. Our next slide on the PowerPoint would be singular and plural in Spanish. Well, if you take the class that I teach uh, where we learn Spanish by jokes, where every week we would have a joke or some jokes, and then we would use that as, as a way to learn uh, the things that somebody would normally learn in the first level of Spanish. Well, we'll practice that every week, and we'll learn how to make nouns plural, and I promise you that in a short time, you'll become very good at making singular words in Spanish plural. Last thing, while we are talking about classes, here are the Spanish classes that I teach on a regular basis. And you'd get it online. Uh, we have a free class that I teach on Proverbs or Short Thoughts. And five days a week, you get a short message, a proverb, and uh, we would figure out the vocabulary and what it means. Every once in a while, probably a few times each month, I have free culture classes that I give. I've lived in uh, several different Spanish-speaking countries. I have lots of experiences with culture, and uh, I like sharing those because they're kind of interesting. I've already talked to you about the beginning to intermediate level that I have, which would be equivalent to like the first level that you would take in high school or in college and uh, we would focus we would learn everything by using jokes and that would come out to about 50 cents per lesson and we have five lessons per week uh, another beginning to intermediate level we can learn by songs that are popular songs with many different uh, artists from many different Spanish-speaking countries that also would come out to 50 cents a lesson and we'd, there would be about five lessons per week. I have another type <coughs> of class that I teach and that's where short videos, this would be at an intermediate level where you'd need to have a little bit of a background of vocabulary. If you've taken the uh, beginning classes for uh, three or four months, you would probably be able to work up to the place where you could do the videos. The videos are done by uh, native speakers and they're very short, three to five minutes, but all different types of topics and themes. And uh, you would especially get a chance to do a lot of listening and understanding, but I would be guiding you in all of that practice. Finally, we have some short stories. Uh, this would be short stories written in Spanish by many, many different authors. Uh, there's lots of really neat literature, uh, fun stories, and uh, I would make it simple enough that, you know, once you've got to an intermediate level where you've got kind of a background and vocabulary, then I would teach you the rest of the vocabulary for the, the stories as well as we'd be able to figure out the stories and get some grammar out of it. Anyways, if you're interested in these free classes or any of the other really inexpensive classes you can go to www.spanishmadefun.com and uh, there if you sign up uh, we'll be able to start uh, sending you those lessons uh, every single week uh, thank you very much uh, let me stop sharing this screen bueno esta sería nuestra lección para hoy today our lesson was making a singular word plural Four little rules. Let's do a quick review before we say goodbye. Rule number one, we said if the singular, if a word ends in A, E, I, or U, or a vowel, all we have to do is add what? Yep, just, a, just an S, and that would make it plural. We said if a word ends in a consonant, that's every other word, every other letter except for A, E, I, or U, we would need to add ES, and that would make it plural. One exception to the rule, that's the letter Z. Since we're not allowed to have a Z in front of an E, we'd have to change the Z to a C, and then we'd add the ES. Letter S, sometimes we will add an ES. Sometimes we would just leave it. Bueno, 
Hasta la próxima lección. I'll see you next lesson. Adiós.